Today we're going to talk about what a servant leader is, as illustrated by a somewhat unexpected character when thinking about this topic, Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Now, as leadership figures go, he has a few flaws. But just go with me here on the analogy for a little bit. Now, my favorite way to think of a servant leader is as a trail guide. In fact, the term servant leader was coined in the 1970s by Robert Greenleaf after he read a short novel wherein a godlike being in disguise comes down and accompanies a large group on a long journey. And while he accompanies this group, he does all of their menial chores, he keeps their spirits up, and he ultimately guides the way. Robert Greenlee felt that leaders had a lot to learn about the way this celestial trail guide served and led his team. Unpacking this analogy a little bit further, if a servant leader is a trail guide, then a servant leader should have the following characteristics. Number one, a servant leader serves first before anything else. This is a loaded statement, but serving first primarily entails A, removing impediments and obstacles to help others advance their work without hindrance. For example, Don't follow the lights. And B, enabling people to succeed by providing them with what they need for success, whether this be simple logistics, career advancement options, or rabbit for food. Ugh. Look! Look! See what Sneagle friends? Number two. A servant leader leads with strong vision and influences or persuades others to follow. In other words, a servant leader knows the way forward and brings others along for the ride. Come on, hobbits! Long ways to go yet. Smeagol will show you the way. Follow me. Creepiness and murderous intent aside, what you just witnessed is a key difference between traditional management as we think of it and servant leadership. A manager makes sure all of the cogs of the machine are working properly. A servant leader sets a clear mission, influences others to follow that mission, and sets guidelines so that he or she can trust employees to manage themselves. Moving along, number three, a servant leader empathizes and accepts. This is the touchy-feely part. Greenleaf felt that to effectively earn trust, a servant leader should hold a non-judgmental awareness and understanding for what people are feeling and experiencing. Master. <sighs> Master carries heavy burden. Spiegel knows. However, while tolerant of imperfection and always accepting of the individual, a servant leader need not accept sub-ideal behaviors like poor performance or attitude. It's the servant leader's duty to identify these behaviors and to coach employees to, quote, grow taller than they would otherwise be, end quote. And this brings us to our final point, number four. A servant leader has foresight that is grounded in expertise and local understanding. Servant leaders, like trail guides, are skilled and experienced. After all, none of us would want to follow a trail guide that had never actually been on a hike. A servant leader also understands the people, culture, and general landscape of the environment in which they lead. Similarly, our Gollum is an expert at traversing to and from Mordor, and knows well the cultures, people, creatures, bogs, caves, paths, etc. along the way. I found it. I did. The way through the marshes. Orcs don't use it. Orcs don't know it. They go round for miles and miles. Come quickly. Soft and quick as shadows we must be. It is this expertise that lends him foresight about the trail forward, and that compels Frodo and Sam to follow him, even though it's not that great of an idea. 
Servant leadership is an ever-increasingly popular concept in agile spaces because the characteristics of a servant leader ultimately empower and enable self-managing cross-functional agile teams. It's very important as agile leaders that we think of ourselves less as managers and more as trail guides for our teams going forward. Thank you very much for tuning in and we will see you next time.